this is Jana with Furl Together. In this week's video of the felted clog knit along, we're going to knit the cuff or the contrasting color around the top border of the clog. Now, you might be knitting these in one color and that's okay. If you're knitting them in a contrasting color, it might be a little bit easier. But I'm going to show you how I knit them in the round as the pattern shows. But I'm also going to show you how I knit them back and forth. That's handy if you don't have a smaller cable and you want to just knit them on a longer cable. Um, back and forth is really easy and you just seam it up at the end and because it's bulky or two strands of worsted held together it goes by really quickly and the seaming is no big deal and it doesn't have to be neat and tidy because we're going to felt it and smush it all together anyway so it's going to be fine <laughs> all right before we get started with that i just want to give a shout out to all my patrons thank you so much for supporting the channel i couldn't bring you videos every single week without your help and your financial support so if you're interested in pledging a small monthly amount, I offer some benefits for that. Hop on over to patreon.com forward slash pearl together to see what those benefits are for your small monthly pledge. All right, let's get started. Okay, I finished the top of the foot section and now I'm ready to begin the cuff. So the I'm just going to attach the same color I used for the sole. Again, I'm going to do a lark's head, which is just doubling over the yarn. I put my finger and thumb up through and down around the outside to make one of those um, cinch it down knots. I call it a lark's head. I think there's multiple names for that. I don't know. Anyway, I cut the top of the foot yarn, and I'm just going to put that through the loop here and tighten it down. So as I mentioned before, it doesn't have to be pretty. This is just a secure way to do this. Um, before we we felt it, and that's all gonna blend together. And if you you know if you just want to tie a square knot, that's okay too. Whatever you, whatever works. Okay, the cuff is super simple. We're just gonna knit one plain round, and then we're gonna purl five rounds. And the point of knitting this first round is because it looks nice to start with a knit round, but also because we want the purl bumps to be on the back for this first round. You'll see why when we get to the point where we're going to roll the cuff and then we're going to pick up those purl bumps around the back side or around the wrong side of our work. You'll see what I mean here in a moment. So I'll go ahead and knit the first round and purl five. Okay, I've knitted all the rows I needed to on the cuff and now what we're going to do is we're going to fold this in and attach it and cast off. We're going to do that all in one round. So you're going to work at it from the wrong side or from the inside here and see this how we knitted that first round and that created pearl bumps on this side and if you're using contrasting color that's super easy to see but even if you're not you can still tell where that first round is knitted so you're going to take a smaller needle a smaller circular needle that you can it can be uh we're knitting with size 13 so i usually use a 10 and a half or an 11. so what we're going to do first is grab the first one like that and we're going to go around and pick them up. I do it from the top down so that the stitches are oriented correctly on the needle as I go. Um, if you do it from the bottom up then you'll have everything backwards so from the from the top down like that and you're just going to go all the way around picking up the pearl bumps of that first round or the contrasting one. Okay. If you didn't use a contrasting color, um, it would just be the lower loop. So if that's an umbrella, that's a smile. So you'll go pick up all the smiles. Does that make sense? <laughs> the umbrella smile thing I think I got from Stacy Perry on Very Pink Knits. I think that's where I first heard that was, you know, the umbrella and the smile. It's kind of cheesy, but it works. It illustrates my point. Okay, so we're going to go all the way around and pick this up. It gets a little awkward when you get to the halfway point, so if it gets a little tight with the turn, just pull that through and do the magic loop thing, do the magic loop around, and carry on. Um, this one, I think, is like a really long cable, but just use whatever you have. If you have DPNs, that works too. Okay, I've picked up all my stitches all the way around, and now I'm going to, rather than using the 13, to pick these up and knit into them, I'm going to go ahead and use the smaller, the smaller needle here. Um, that makes more sense, really, so it's not too tight and the gauge doesn't super matter on this round. Um, this is definitely a longer cable, so I'm just kind of loop circling that around and coming into here. Now I'm going to knit both of these first ones together, and I'm going to leave this first stitch on the needle. So you're going to knit these two together. I hold these parallel. 
and I hold them as if they're one, and I knit those two together. Okay, then we're going to go in and do it again from the bottom to the top one, knitting those two st stitches together off both the needles. Push that off now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the one that's forward, the one that's closest to me, and I'm going to grab that. Let me get this other cable out of the way. I'm going to grab that and pull that up over the top. So I'm casting off as I go. So knit into that one, the second one, knit those two together, take those both of them off. I think I pushed this towards sort of out of the way, so I'm holding this smaller needle that's closest to me, the in the lower inside needle, and then I grab the last stitch and pull it up over the one I just knitted. So, and I make sure I pull a little extra and make sure I'm casting off loosely because you don't want anything to be puckered. So better be a little bit loose because it will felt together and shrink down. So you're going to go all the way around like that, casting off as you go. Whoops. The other thing I find that I do is, here, let me show you. When I pull that second stitch over the first one, I tend to draw back here so that I'm tightening that stitch on the needle and bringing it through. And then I loosen it up again as I'm pulling that slack through. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so we're going to go all the way around like this and cast off. At the same time, we're rolling the cuff in. So that's going to make a really nice edge. You can see how that's going to roll down, and that's what makes your cozy cuff. Okay, I've done the joining and the cast off all the way around, and you'll notice I've got this little laddering thing going on here at the beginning of the join, and that's because my cable was too long, um, and I had some pulling here. But we can fix that, so I'm not too concerned about that. Um, but I am going to take this, I'm going to cut this off, oh, maybe a foot back, and then I'm going to pull this through, and then I'm going to start uh, weaving this in and kind of sewing that together and mitigating that, that gap. So I'll show you how I'm going to do that. And keep in mind, this is going to be felted, so everything I do is not going to be shown. It's all going to be mashed and agitated and felted together, and you're never going to see any of this stuff because I'm not super good at finish work, um, but I can make it happen. Making I can do it well enough to get it done. I'm just going to go in underneath a couple of these strands and I'm going to tighten that up and, and do like a mattress stitch here to tighten up the inside of this. So that's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to go back and forth from left to right give that a little tug and the wool is nice because it's it kind of grabs on itself and so it's it's pretty easy to cinch up any issues that you have since this is the same color yeah nobody's going to see this it's all going to felt down together so it's it doesn't have to be super pretty so that's all i've done there is cinch cinch that up now to tie this off actually i'm not really going to tie it off i'm just going to go back and forth again and i'm going to come up here and then i'm probably just going to weave it in and out following along the pearl bumps in one of these spots. So I'm just going to go like this and duplicate stitch basically. And then again, that's just going to all felt together. So now I'm going to do the same thing with, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to weave this, this in the same way and then I'm going to weave in this, probably doing a duplicate stitch. Then I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom where I'm going to start to sew up the heel. But I'll show you that next time when we deal with the second sole and sewing up the, the heel seams, which is super easy. Um, so we're not going to worry about that right now. We'll do that next time. So just weave in these ends, and then we'll carry on with the second, do your second one. Because now you should have all your needles free. So you can start your second slipper if you haven't yet. And I'll show you how I'm going to knit the cuff for the other slipper that I'm doing back and forth. All right, here's the second pair that I'm knitting and I'm doing these back and forth. You can see I've got this all laid out here. I showed you how I did the top of the foot that way. Now I'm gonna switch over to the cuff and I'm gonna cut this one probably, I don't know, like before, 10 or 12 inches. Um, this time I am gonna use this to sew up this side, this uh, back of the heel seam in a little while. So not right now though. 
Right now I'm going to join the other color for the cuff. Okay, the top of the foot I was using Lamb's Pride worsted and I'm holding two strands together as the pattern indicates. But the sole, I'm using some Lamb's Pride bulky because that's just what I had on hand and that's the colors that my mom chose and so that's fine. I can make that work. So that's how come this I'm only using this lighter color as a single strand because that's what she picked. And it's bulky, so that's fine. Okay, so again, the pattern indicates that I'm just going to knit one round. So I'm just going to, I'm starting out here with the right side facing me, just like you will too. Same as if I was knitting in the round. But I'm going to knit my way over for the first row, and that's going to create those pearl bumps at the bottom that we're going to use to pick up, just like we did when we were knitting in the round with the other pair that I'm doing. All right, I've knitted that first row. And now I need to do the next five rows so that there's pearl bumps on the right side of my work. So that's easy enough. I'm just going to purl back this way. Purl, purling with the wrong side facing me will produce pearl bumps on the other side. Okay, so that's easy enough. Knit the second row. So if you have five rows that you need pearl bumps on the right side of your slipper, you're just going to alternate. Okay, at the end of that second row, which is the first row of your pearl bumps, now if you want pearl bumps, again, to occur on the right side of your work, then you just need to purl. So then we're going to purl back this way, and then we're going to knit back the other way. So we, we have, we're producing pearl bumps on the right side rows. And since we're knitting back and forth, you'll have to alternate whether you're purling or knitting in order to get the bumps on the outside of your slipper. Okay, I've knitted and purled back and forth until I have uh, five rows of pearl bumps here and then my first foundation row, my first one was just knit. But you'll notice now I'm on the wrong side or the wrong end uh, to be doing the picking up that we did because when we knit in the round, we ended up back here and we could just carry on across. So all I'm gonna do is purl my way back so I end up over here and I'm yes, that adds another row, but it's no big deal. In order to have the convenience of knitting this back and forth, especially if you don't have the correct size cable, you will add an extra row on the cuff to get yourself back over to this side. Okay, here we are. I have purled my way back and now I'm on the correct end to do the next step. So I'm on the right end with the wrong side of my work facing me and I'm gonna pick up these contrasting purl bumps on the first row. So again, I'm going down from the top down to the bottom so that my stitches are oriented properly. I'm just gonna go around and pick all those up and then we'll do the same thing that we did before where we just knit those two together and cast off at the same time. I've picked up all the stitches and I've pulled my needle through so that I have both of the ends here together on my left hand. I'm holding those together while I'm knitting these two rows together. So just leave that first one on the needle go in as if to knit on both of those stitches, and then we're gonna pull the first one over the second so we can bind off as we go. Now again, I give that a little bit of slack so things aren't too scrunched up and tight. Also, you need to have some looseness to create friction in the felting process. You need to have some space for the fibers to rub together um, and felt properly when we go to agitate everything in the washer or in a bucket if you're doing it by hand. All right, again, when we get to the last stitch, I'm just going to leave, I don't know, 10, 8 to 10 inches maybe. I want to have enough to sew up my seam. So I'm just going to cut that and draw this through. And then I'm going to use this to sew up the cuff portion here. And then I'm going to use this to sew up the main back of the heel part so our colors match up. Okay, there we go. All set. As always, if you find these videos helpful, click the like and subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Next time we'll be sewing up that inner sole. I'll show you how to attach the second sole. And if you're gonna knit a bumper, I'll show you that as well. So go ahead and knit up that second clog so you'll have both of them done and be ready to knit the outer soles and attach them next time. All right, thanks for watching.